And hey, you know what? We actually solved the Northern Ireland issue. The Northern Ireland is usually ruled over by the Brits, and the Brits have now just been removed. Can't have North Ireland if there's no British people, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. My name is Van Zorensen, and welcome to this special St. Patrick's Day video. Now, there's a very simple arbitrary rule that I'm applying to myself. I am not allowed to attack Ireland directly, ending the campaign almost instantaneously, which means I have to attack through Great Britain and Scotland in order to get to the Irish lands. So, I would invite you all to sit, sit back, be relaxed, you have a nice Irish brew in front of you. And now, without any further ado, let's begin. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in early 19th century Europe. Basically, the whole premise of this is the fact that Napoleon took over revolutionary France and has simply wanted to become emperor of all of Europe. And basically everyone around him just said, no. So, we're going to have to enforce Napoleon's rule. Or is that the case, really? Because, remember, we have the secret... We have the secret objective of liberating the Irish from Britain's control. And that is what we are going to do today. What a magical journey we're going to be going on. I'm so excited! Now, if you want to see us break in the to liberate Ireland, please consider liking this video. Hey, you might have already subscribed as well. Mm, that would be a very, very proud mood move for you, my friend. First things first is if I'm going to have to. First things first, if I'm going to. Here, and has the game just crashed? Well, it would appear as if the game has indeed just crashed. Alright, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The game literally crashed on me. It's clearly obvious that the British are fully aware of what I want to do, and they're trying to stop me. However, that is not going to stop me for long, ladies and gentlemen, because this will be the day. As I was about to say before I was so rudely interrupted, it's the fact that in order to take out the British, we need... We need, to, we need this army to make sure that Austria does not go crazy and capture all of our friends to the south here. Now, before we begin the invasion of Britain, it is important for us to understand that we need two armies to take out the British from their homeland. We need two units to occupy the entirety of the British main. Two whole armies are necessary to take out the British, because the British are very, very angry with us, and so we need to ensure sure that they could never rise up against us again. Welcome to turn two, ladies and gentlemen, and it appears that the Austrians have declared war on the Ottomans, so everything is perfectly normal and everything is working as intended. However, we need to prepare ourselves for the invasion of England, and for that, we need two entire armies to do it, ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe it. We also need to position our armies pretty well. Oh, I am also playing on the very easy difficulty because um, I don't want to sweat my socks off. Now, I'm sure many of you will be like, but wait, how are you going to get past the British Navy? Trust me, the British Navy is the least of our concerns. We can, the British Navy can be very easily by bypassed if you know how to do it. Anyway, there's not much to do right now except prepare for our eventual triumph in England. So, we're just going to remain here. And I'll be back when something a bit more interesting is beginning to happen. Alright, Napoleon and his army is ready for the portage across the English Channel. And how are we going to deal with the British Navy? Well, it's very simple. We are simply going to go around them. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Turns out the best way to beat the British Navy is to simply pull off the same tactics the Germans did and go around them. 
All we simply need to do is find an open port wherever the British Navy is not looking, and ba-bam! We are in. Ah, huh, it looks like the Austrians are starting to get a little too close up here for my comfort. So, it's time that we recruit some more National Guard up there. Oh no, it looks like the British fleet has is in, is attacking Antwerp. Oh no, how are we going to deal with that? Well, actually, we're not going to deal with that. In fact, the British... As a matter of fact, the British have just made their first mistake. Because with their fleet blockading one of our ports, we now have full reign to simply attack a... to land in the British territories. But you know what, it's probably best we beat them out of Antwerp. Okay, now... Here, in this turn, the British have decided to just go away from Antwerp and completely blockade the Bavarian Republic. However, this means that they have made their second biggest mistake, leaving the way to even the Cardiff wide open for my assault. While I could force them to surrender, it's probably best we just auto-resolve this. And there we go! The whales have been, well, I would say liberated, but no option to liberate them actually existed. Uh, I, I wonder, what did Creative Assembly mean by this? Oh, yes, I completely forgot about this uh, fleet down in the south. Well, might as well do a little bit of pir privateering, you know what? Because why not? See what I mean? Why do you need two armies to invade Britain? It's because of this right here. The British, because they have nothing better to do, simply will just keep all of their armies at home. Obviously, they believe that there's no need for them to invade Europe, which, with the assassination of that so-called gentleman, Britain will not be able to receive any text faster, meaning we have the slight technological advantage. Ah, and it looks as if off the Duke of Wellington has decided to engage us, so... I think it is only fair that we give them at least some chance to fight. And by some chance, I mean no chance at all. Welcome to the battle, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go, we have begun to outrange the British because we have 12 guns. 12 Iber guns, and they only have 6 and 9. Yes, technically they are able to open fire on these guys here, but... I don't particularly care, because they weren't really expected to do much of anything anyway. Ah, oh, looks like this enemy cavalry unit is trying to come in. A little do they know that it is to their demise. Because these things can outrange them. Like I said, they were easily dealt with. Well, anyway, here we are, still pounding the enemy with our long-ranged artillery, while their artillery basically does nothing. Oh, oh wait, and since we're targeting their artillery with our artillery, we're accidentally hitting some of their light dragoons behind them. Which, I think, is a 500 IQ strategy. But, but honestly, that is basically what happens whenever you put units behind artillery. In front of artillery, too, actually. Anyway, the enemy is approaching our flanks here, so it's probably best we move our horses to some place where they are not likely to be seen. And there we go, our cavalry is hidden in this narrow strand of trees. Don't ask why, I mean, it just happens. Actually, you know what, we'll use this artillery to target the Duke of Wellington. If we can knock him out, then that means we'll have the early edge on them. Scared. Yes, you better be scared, because Napoleon's artillery is coming for you. Bloody 
And with that, the Duke of Wellington is running away. Not very British-like, but then again, we didn't really give him much of a chance, did we? It's about reaching that point of the battle where we will start having to rely on the infantry. However, let's engage the cavalry in a cavalry duel, like And already the first of the ground battles has begun, as we are engaging the light adventures. Come on, cavalry. Ready? Aim. Ready? Aim. And shooty shoot. Alright, now it's time to use the shrapnel shot. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! Yes, get Napoleon out of there. There is often an advantage in ordering your infantry to counter charge and attack your formation. The trick is to clicking on the melee button on the left of the battle control panel will lock the selected melee capable units into melee mode. All attack orders will result in a hand-to-hand -hand attack until you click on the melee button again. Oh, and with that, the entire enemy army is now routing. All it took with a single infantry charge? What cowards! Just then again, their general did run away, which is always a shameful display. Let's use this cavalry to harass these units over here, please. Thank you. Also harass them as well, and then be prepared to charge right into their backs. Oh, and these are light troops, so they'll be very easy picking for our units. All right. You know, the best strategy in order to defeat the enemy in the enemy cavalry, rather, I should say, is form a square. That's it. And of course, charging enemies from behinds will always be bad for their morale. No matter who it is. Probably best we start giving these light infantry over here boys some support. So let's send some fusiliers. And now let us bring the full might of our infantry. Of our future ally. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. I have every full confidence that it is going to be a glorious victory. Yes. Shoot those, get those units from behind. Ensure that they never well. Make sure they never come back again. And well, there's the enemy cannons. Let's charge them down. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. That's not a problem, because the enemy is control. There we go. Glorious success. The Duke of Wellington has just been completely and utterly destroyed. Meaning that the way to London is wide open. And of course, what do you do when the way to London is wide open? You ignore the Welsh and you just go and take London itself. And there we go. We have the entirety of the UK underneath our wraps, which means that it's probably best for us to, oh, I don't know, begin the conquest of Ireland, perhaps? However, there's this, there is this small British army here, but with the majority of the British army destroyed, I don't think there should be any problem whatsoever. And my army in Italy is almost ready, so we should be able to push back the Austrians, because they've become a little bit spicy as of recent times. Selecting the option to liberate turns the region... All right, and now here, my southern army in Italy has gotten great success and has created a buffer state between my ally, the Kingdom of Italy, with Italy. Don't ask me how that works. It 
just works. Okay, the situation as it is developed here is simply this. The British population has frozen up against their rightful French rulers, they're gone. And it looks as if the Welsh are beginning to rise up against their British overlords. Without much on the way, it's time for us to continue our invasion. Oh, and Russia has decided to attack Switzerland, but it doesn't matter because we are going to shoot. I also gave Tyrol back to the Italians, because the Italians are not at war with anybody, so... A buffer state grows. But now it is time for us to march forth and here... And massacre them all, and you know what, I suppose we could liberate Scotland. The population of England is starting to get nasty again, which only can mean that we need to hurry up. Hey look! Switzerland's back, everybody! Unfortunately, we have to head back to England because, well, you guessed it. The stupid English are becoming a bit un- are becoming very displeasurable. But it doesn't matter, the second army is ready and we're going to ensure the stupid Welsh that well, the game was rigged from the start. You know what, actually, I could technically just leave them the way they are, because that means I've technically liberated Wales from the evil British. I mean, either one appeals to me. Ah, who could have predicted the British are rising up yet again? And hey, look! Brandon! Württemberg is back! As well. Alright. That's an. Alright, there's been another rebellion. They're gone. Now it's time to go back to what our, we originally were intended to do, and that was the liberation of Ireland from the evil British. And there we go. The Welsh is now underneath occupation. Don't worry, peoples. The mighty state of Bavaria will be able to help out in the coming battles. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Ireland has been liberated. And hey, you know what? We actually solved the Northern Ireland issue. The Northern Ireland is usually ruled over by the Brits, and the Brits have now just been removed. Can't have North Ireland if there's no British people, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am afraid that is the challenge complete. Ireland has been liberated on this St. Patrick's Day. Yes, I'm afraid that that is all the time that I have for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for watching this video. You should probably consider liking and subscribing as well. You have a lovely St. Patrick's Day, and goodbye for now.